My name is David Venondia, and I've been manager of a Newcastle-based act called Crying Out Loud for three years. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Tell me who is the... Crying Out Loud was one of the most promising boy bands to come out of the Northeast in the early 90s and seemed set for success. They took on David Venondia as their manager in 1995, despite his lack of experience. I had no prior experience in music management at all and was in fact down a social club where they were playing live to an absolute teeming audience. Now the girls were cavorting about, their stage capability was amazing, but what I noticed was the electricity between them and the audience and I thought this, there's something here which is better or had more potential than just the average. Kick him, why we kick him? By 1997, Crying Out Loud was being courted by record companies and they were about to get their first national television exposure when band member John Fisher fell seriously ill with a rare gastric virus. We were basically going down to uh, take part in the Jonathan Ross talent show, uh, LWT, and John had been complaining he hadn't been feeling that well prior to this. In fact, uh, he had he was bad enough to be laid up. All I know is that on the Sunday morning I got a phone call from from one of the band members, I think it was Paul, it basically said, oh you know, we've got a problem. I was in the shower, all excited, all ready to go down for the big break, you know, millions of people watching the TV, and then um, I got a phone call off my dad and he just said, Chris, you know, uh, John won't uh, sing anymore because um, he actually died at 10 to 9. They didn't know what to do. Shall we go forward? Shall we call it a day? Um, you know, everything we've worked for, it's all just blown up in our face. Uh, bottom line, one just had to take them firmly and say, look, you must do this. Go on. Do it for John. Do it for yourselves. You owe it to yourselves. And have a go and see if you can gain the success. Steve Halliday was a former member and close friend of the band. Steve was all ready um, to set us off to go down to London. And Steve says, well, Paul, myself said to Steve, look, you've got to try and help us out, Steve. You've got to join Crown Loud and come down to London, you know? So since John died at 10 to 9, we were on the train going down to London at 12 o'clock. I have to give credit to the third member who came in, Steve, who had, who had come in on a stand-in stand situation like this. To, to perform the way they did with that on their shoulders was just, in my opinion, amazing. But in first place, and going through to the final next week, it is Boy Band crying out loud, ladies and gentlemen. It was all up and down from then. To my feelings, I mean, John was my best mate. He only lived on the corner. He was like a brother to me. I think uh, we should have stopped it after the Big B Talent Show because if something goes out of something which is working so well, the chemistry's not there. I mean, nothing against Steve. I mean, Steve's a very talented guy, good singer, good actor, but if you've worked with a group of people for so long and you take somebody out of that team, not take them out, but they actually go off the face of the earth, you can't replace that, that feeling you get on stage. They one day just fell apart. They just split. So they split actually at the point of a record deal. Now, to me, having put so much time and effort into this, I found this frustrating. I, I had an air of disbelief. Here was the opportunity, the goal we'd been working for, the opportunity to launch a single onto the marketplace, the European marketplace as well, and it was all dashed. Steve and Paul left England to work abroad, leaving Chris to start again from scratch. I've started a band with two girls, we're called Three Way. We've got the right chemistry, it should work.
David Venondia has also made a fresh start with a new band from Hexham called Obi One. <laughs> Obi One are a marvellous act. They're dedicated to music. Glenn is a prolific songwriter and also a musician. They work hard at what they do and they connect well. I'm hoping they will achieve a record contract which will enable their music, which I think the whole marketplace should be hearing, to be put on air. Oh, oh, oh. 